Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Vidyuto Studio and today a quick video to share with you how to use a pointer pack. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so once you get the pack, you will get this zip file. Just double click on it to unzip it. It will just give you a folder. In the folder, you have a couple of things. We have the license, the installation instruction and the GRFX file. Just double click on the GRFX file to start the installation. Right now, I already have the pack installed, so I'm just gonna overwrite it. Then once in DaVinci Resolve, you can go over to Effect, Titles, Video to Studio, and then you can just scroll down all the way down here to Pointer Pack. As you may have noticed, there is a couple of category. We have arrows, brush, cursor, and shapes. So we have four categories in title, but we also have a few in effect. So here, if we close title and go over to Effect, Video to Studio, and we scroll down to Pointer Pack, we have a few effects that we can use here as well. All right, so let's start with an effect. Right now I have a screen recording for a tutorial and I would like to emphasize here some things in the inspector and make it a bit bigger. So we could use here the rectangle pointer and drag that here onto a clip. The effect basically apply a mask, which is a replicate of the actual clip. And now we can just play around to just increase the size. We can just move that window around. We can adjust the blur, the background. So I'm gonna show you in a minute what you can do with it. Right here, as you can see, we have blur or black color. So you can just play around with that to have either a completely black background or to just darken your background. Right now, we're just gonna leave it at one. Then here in media, you can play around with the blur size and the overall strength of your blur. So right now, if we increase the blur size, as you can see, we cannot see anything in the background anymore. And the more we decrease that, the more we can see. Right now, in my case, I don't want to use the blur at all. So I'm just gonna basically bring the blend here all the way down so we can see actually the background. Right now, if I open a rectangle, I'm gonna show you there is basically two things that you can move around, the actual rectangle itself onto the clip that has been zoomed on and you can also move the media within that frame at any moment if you want to reset anything you can just double click on a parameter and it will just reset it to the default parameter so right then in my case let's say i want to bring that rectangle on the right corner to make the inspector bigger what i can do is here simply reduce a bit the width of that rectangle increase a bit the height until I get something that looks fairly about the same shape of the inspector. And then here, we're just gonna move around that rectangle and put it in a corner. Now, the problem, as you can see, is that the media doesn't align with the rectangle. So now we're gonna go over to the media and we're just gonna move it around inside the rectangle so it take properly the shape of the mask that we have. Now we can also make some adjustment, for example, here to the line around our window. So we could, for example, here, play around with the corner radius and have a smoother corner. We can also play around with the border width to have a thinner line or a thicker line, depending on the look that we're going for. Right now, I'm just gonna leave the border width by default. And it's not the case right now, but let's say that I wanted to drive only the focus on the inspector right there. I could just increase the blur strength to the maximum again. If I wanted to draw the attention of the viewer only on the inspector, that could be a good option. Another quick tip, if you want to move the window around, you can always go right here down to Fusion Overlay and it will just bring the Fusion Control and you can just move that window easily right there. And then with that other control right here, we can just move the media inside of the mask. And when you want to deactivate it from the viewer, you can just click on it and it will disappear. All right, now let's move on to the title. So I'm just gonna delete that effect and we're gonna go over to title, scroll down to pointer pack. And here we're gonna start with some arrows. Let's bring, for example, arrow number six and drag that into our timeline. As usual here, you can adjust the animation length in second. Right now by default, it is one second, but if we wanted it to last longer, we could select two seconds, for example, and now the animation will be longer. We can adjust the overall size and position of that arrow. So here we could displace it, for example, and put it right here, pointing from the inspector to the timeline. For most of the arrow, you have a flip control where here you can just switch the position horizontally of that arrow and also vertically. Then here you have some more control for the arrow. In that case, that will be the size of uh, the dotted line. So right here, we're gonna decrease that. And then we're gonna, for example, here, decrease the spacing to have like a flat line 
or we can just increase the spacing to have a dotted line. You have control over the shape of the arrow by here moving around the different points. So here we have the first point that we can move. Then we have this second point right there. And finally, we get the third point. Then as usual, you have also the color control. So right now the arrow is white, but it could be any other color. If we switch it to red, for example, we have control over the shadow. Right now the shadow is hard, but if we want to have something smoother, we can just increase here the blur. And that will just help to separate the arrow from all background, but it will not be as noticeable. And if you want to get completely rid of it, you can always remove here the shadow strength by putting it to zero, or you can increase it to the maximum so it's very much visible. We also have a glow option. So here we can increase the gain and you will have a glowing arrow. And that's pretty much it for the arrow. They pretty much all work the same. Um, there is not that much difference between the parameter. Uh, there is sometimes a few unique things, for example, like this one where you can control the look of the arrow by here playing around with those different buttons, but it's nothing really major. It's just like rounding up the corner of the arrow um, or make them straight, for example. But it's pretty much always the same. So then it's just up to you to just adjust the position and point in the right direction to what you want to draw attention to. Then the second category that we have are brush. So you can just create some underline with it. Uh, you can just point at some text very easily by underlining it. So here, for example, we can just displace that. And uh, if we're talking about the center position, we could just put that right there. And that will emphasize the point by showing that we're talking about that parameter. We could also use a circle brush. So here, just bring that in and do exactly the same thing. Uh, by adjusting here the overall position, bring it in here on the position, and then we can adjust the individual point of that brush to really fit the shape of whatever we're trying to circle. So here I can just bring that up a little bit. I can do the same thing for this one. Here we go. And by playing with each of those points, you can basically customize it as much as you want. You can also here play around with the level. It's the overall opacity of the pointer and you can play around with the border width to have it thinner. For example, here, because the overall line on the screen crusts are thinner, I thought it'd be better to have a thinner line circling the parameter. Then we have some cursor. So if I were to drag that in, um, you can choose between a different type of animation for each cursor. So here, as you can see, the clicking right now is a circle. Then we have that kind of sun um, type of animation, which is a bit different. And then we have the third one that is looking different as well. It's basically a hollow uh, circle. So you can easily switch between each of those. Right now, for example, for something like that, as you can see, the cursor doesn't go away right away. So I'm going to reduce it by a lot. So basically when the click is done, the arrow is going to disappear. So we're just going to give it the time for it to click. And then here we go. So now it's just clicking and disappearing right away. So you can always adjust the timing of your pointers by simply extending or reducing them. And then the last one, the shapes. So here, for example, I could bring the rectangle again and drag that in. Um, we can, for example, point here at the inspector once more, and we're going to just select here control, reduce the width, and then we're going to adjust the overall position of that rectangle right there, reducing the width a little bit more, adjusting the position with the height right here. And I think we're good. Right now, I just want to decrease a bit the border width. So I'm just going to go slightly thinner. And then we can go over to shadow and we can just increase the blur so it's not as noticeable. And now right now we've basically easily pointed at the inspector. And that's pretty much it. Hope this video was helpful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment what kind of video and pack you would like to see us make next. And see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videodetailstudio.com.